take a look at how we can use linear systems in order to solve problems. Before we get started, it's important to know that I'm assuming you have a good understanding of the methods we can use to solve systems of equations. We have the graphing method, we have the substitution method, and we also have the elimination method, or the addition method. Also, we can use matrices and then the calculator in order to find a solution. If you need help working with any of those methods in order to solve a system, I recommend that you go back and rewatch some of those videos or come in and ask some questions. There's three types of problems we'll look at today. We'll look at problems where we're looking for the cost of something, for example, the cost of an oven mitt. We'll look at examples where we're looking for a quantity, for example, the number of tickets sold to the Rainbow Classic. And we'll also look at some rate problems where distance is rate times time. In our first example, we have a baseball manager. The baseball manager bought four bats and nine balls for $76.50. Similarly, she also bought three bats and 12 balls for $81. The question is, what is the cost of a bat and what is the cost of a ball? Well, it seems to be a situation where she can't find the receipt, but she found the canceled check that came back from the bank. She knows the amounts and she knows how many of each thing she bought, but her boss wants to know how much each item was. She decided to use a system of equations in order to do that. The first thing we have to do is look at what we're trying to find, the cost of a ball and the cost of a bat, and then write a let statement to represent that. So notice my let statements right here. Let x represent the cost of a bat. Let y represent the cost of a ball. Notice how specific those let statements are. Cost of a bat, cost of a ball. It does not simply say let x equals bats, let y equals balls. It's more specific than that. And yours should be like that as well. Once I do that, I now have my variables defined. I know I have X's, I know I have Y's, and now I'll pull the information from the problem. It says the manager bought four bats, nine balls, for $76.50. X is the number of bats, Y is the number of balls. Four bats plus nine balls equals $76.50. On the second day, she went out and got three bats and 12 balls. Three times the bats, $12 times the number of balls, gives me $81. Now I have a system of equations. Two variables, two equations. I can use any method I'd like to solve that. When I solve this equation system, I get x equals 9, y equals 4.5. What does that mean? Well, it simply means x is 9, x is the cost of a bat, so a bat costs $9. y is 4.5, that's the cost of a ball, so it looks like a ball is $4.50. So you can see how we took the information to write our system of equations. First thing we did was write out our let statements, then write our two equations, solve it using the method of our choice, and then come up with your final answer. In the next example, we have something very similar. I'd like for you, if you're comfortable at this point, to pause the video and give it a try. Read through the problem. You may have to read it a couple of times, and then come back, and we'll see how you do. If you're still feeling a little sketchy about it, then you might want to try writing your let statements and see what you can come up with, and then I'll guide you through the rest of the problem. Please pause the video here. Let's take a look at our second example. In example two, we're selling pretzels and sodas down in the commons. And it says that three pretzels and one soda is $2.75, and that two pretzels and one soda is $2.00 what is the cost of a soda, and what is the cost of a pretzel. Those are the two things I want to know. Those are my unknowns. X will be the cost of a pretzel. Y will be the cost of a soda. Now, three pretzels, one soda. So three times the cost of a pretzel, three X. One times the cost of a soda, one Y, equals 275. Similarly, I can use the second part. 2x plus 1y equals $2. I got that from this right here. Choose your method, solve the system. x is 0.75 and y is 0.5. x is the cost of a pretzel, so a pretzel costs 75 cents. y is the cost of a soda, so a soda must be 50 cents. In our third example, we're looking for something a little bit different. We have a movie theater and they're selling tickets. They sold a total of 150 tickets on one evening. 
an adult costs seven dollars and fifty cents a child costs four seventy five at the end of the night the manager counted the money he had eight hundred ninety one dollars and twenty five cents he looks at the clerk and said well how many adult tickets did we sell and how many ch children's tickets did we sell well the attendant didn't keep track so now we're gonna go through and figure out what we've done we know we sold 150 tickets and we know the costs of them with the total amount of money that we have. Let's begin with our let statement. We want to find how many of each tickets. X will equal the number of adult tickets. Y will equal the number of children's tickets. Now the first thing that we know is we sold seven, or sorry, 150 tickets. 750 would be quite a few. We sold 150 tickets. So the number of adult tickets, X, plus the number of children's tickets, Y, equals 150. Total tickets, number of adults, number of children, add them together. Next, we know we have a total of 891.25. It costs $7.50 for each adult ticket. It costs $4.75 for each children's ticket. And 891.25 is the total amount of money. So we have now our two equations. Make note that if you dislike the decimal points, you can go ahead and multiply that whole equation by 100 so that you have 750x plus 475y equals 89,125. That gets rid of your decimal points, can make it a little easier to work with. Some folks will leave them in and just deal with them. Some folks will multiply the entire equation by 100 so that the decimal points move out. Your choice. Now you have your choice of methods. Solve the system, x equals 65, y equals 85. Since x is the number of adult tickets, we sold 65 adults. y is the number of children's tickets. We have 85. On our next example, I'd like for you to see if you can set that up and work through it. Please pause the video here, then come on back, we'll see how you did. Let's see how you did. In this example, it looks like we're off to summer camp. And it says that there's 148 people going off to summer camp, and they're camping out in the wilderness. It says that the cook ordered 12 pounds of food for every adult, and that he ordered 9 pounds of food for every child to eat over the course of the five days. He ordered 1,410 pounds of food. That's a lot of food. And the question is, how many adults went on this trip? How many children went on this trip? All right, let's see what we've got. First of all, what are we trying to find? the number of adults, the number of children. So we'll let X represent the number of adults and Y represent the number of children. So now there's 148 people. The number of adults plus the number of children adds up to 148. There's our first equation. Next, every adult is going to eat 12 pounds of food, 12X. Every child is going to eat 9 pounds of food, 9Y and that food total is going to add up to 1,410. Solve the system of equations using the method of your choice. X is 26, that's the number of adults. Y is 122, that's the number of children. Example five is very different. These are probably the hardest problems that we'll look at using systems of equations for the time being. These are rate problems. But unlike the rate problems we did before, we have another force in action here. We have the wind and the water current. If you're walking down the street and the wind is blowing behind you, you get a boost. If it's a really windy day and you're walking down the street and the wind is blowing towards you, it's harder to walk. You can probably picture a day like that. So it says we have a motorboat. Going with the current, it can go 24 miles in two hours. Going against the current, those three hours take those going against the going against the current, those 24 miles take three hours. The question is what is the rate of the current and what is the rate of the boat if it was sitting in still water like say Lake Ontario? Well, X is the rate of the current, Y is the rate of the boat in perfectly still water. If we're going with the current, the current is pushing us along. So we're moving at that rate, plus we're also moving however fast our motor is propelling us. We're going the speed of the boat, plus the current of the water. 
because it's carrying us right along quickly. If we're going against the current, the water's pushing us back. And so our boat might be able to travel at, say, 10 miles per hour, but the water's pushing back against it, so it's not going nearly as fast. Our rate of the boat minus the rate of the current gives us the speed going against the current, the number of hours, and then we have the distance. We went 24 miles each way, so 2 times y plus x equals 24. 3 times y minus x equals 24 also. Now I know what you're thinking. If they went the same distance, it's like a round trip problem. Why didn't we just set them equal to each other? Well, that's a legitimate question. The reason we didn't do that is notice we have x's and y's. In order to solve an equation with x's and y's, two variables, we have to have two equations. Because we have to have two equations, setting them equal to each other really wouldn't solve our problem at all. We would only have one equation, and we'd have x's and y's with no ways to solve for either one of them. That's why in this case we use two, two different equations. Now I solve the system, x is 2, y is 10. So the rate of the current, the water's moving at 2 miles per hour going down the river, and the boat is going 10 miles per hour. That means when we're going with the current, the current's going 2, the boat's going 10, we're really moving 12 miles per hour going down that river. Coming back, our boat's going 10, but the water's pushing it back. And so really going back, we're only going 8 miles per hour overall. And so that's a basic problem with these. Now the next question I'd like to see if you can set up. Please pause the video here and then come on back once you think you have it set up and let's see how you did. Let's take a look at example 6. On example 6, we're flying an airplane, and if we have a tailwind when the wind is blowing from behind us, we're going with the wind in the same direction, we can go 1,000 miles in 5 hours. When we're going against the wind, the wind is blowing us from head on, it's you know, holding us back, well, then we can only go 500 miles in 5 hours. What does this mean? Well, we want to know how fast the wind is going, and we want to know how fast the plane's going if it were in totally calm conditions with no wind at all. So I have my let statements, rate of the plane, rate of the wind, all right, and now I have my table. When we're going with the wind, the wind is pushing us, so we're doing the wind plus the speed of the plane, and we're going extra fast. When we're going against the wind, the wind is pushing us back, so we have the rate of the plane minus the rate of the wind, because we're subtracting those two out there number of hours, the total distance traveled by each. Once again, I have two variables, so I need two equations. We went a thousand miles in the first case, 5x plus 5y equals a thousand. We went 500 miles in the second case, 5x minus 5y equals 500, and now we can solve x is 150, that's the speed of the plane if there were no wind at all, and y equals 50, the wind is blowing at 50 miles per hour. These are some basic problems that you can work with when you're dealing with systems of equations. If you're looking to solve something where you have two unknowns, you're looking for two different things, in that case you're going to want a system. Two unknowns means we have to have two equations. This is how you set up different types of word problems that can be represented by using linear systems.